This chapter is about Newton's universal law of gravitational gravitation. So we've all probably heard the story that an apple fell from a tree. Sometimes I hear the story with it falling on Newton's head. Regardless, he did think through the concept, if it, the earth pulls an apple towards it, then why not pull on something farther away, such as the moon? And so through many years and encouragement from others, Newton, of course, had to invent calculus to come up with this universal law of gravitation. But he posited that gravity is a universal attractive force between all objects in the universe. His fundamental equation looks like this. I will explain these pieces in just a sec. So the force of gravity, the attractive force of gravity. Capital G is the universal gravitational constant. It is a constant. The value of this constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. It does have units of newtons meter squared over kilograms squared. It is a very small number, which partially explains why to have an obvious force of gravity, one of the objects needs to be extremely massive. M1 and M2 are the two objects involved in the gravitational attraction. And then R is the distance from the center of mass to center of mass. This is called an inverse square law. We find that many of the forces in nature are, they fall in this category of inverse squares in that the distance between the two objects is in the denominator and it is squared. And so if I, for example, if we had the sun and the earth, and we wanted to change the distance. Say we cut the distance between them in half. By cutting them in the distance in half, we have to square that change, so half the radius. The force would be four times bigger. So the inverse square law, we have that relationship to distance squared. Now in terms of finding these forces, let's go ahead and just find the gravitational force on the Earth due to the Sun. When you look in the test notes, I think it might be the second page, one of those first few pages, there's a table of astronomical data. The mass of the Sun is listed as 1.99 10 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Mass of the Earth is listed as 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And then the distance between them, on average, the Earth does not orbit the Sun in a perfect circle. So the average distance between the Sun and the Earth that is listed is 1.5 times 10 to the 11th meters. So plugging into our equation, we have our constant, 
this very small number. Now in terms of m1 and m2 in the equation, it doesn't matter which one's the mass of the sun and which one's the mass of the earth. We always need the mass of both objects that are involved in the attraction. So one of them is the mass of the sun. The other is the mass of the earth. And then the distance between them squared. Now I wrote the units just so we can see the kilograms are going to cancel. When we square this distance, the meters squared are going to cancel. And we will get this force of gravity in newtons. Now, quite honestly, one of the hardest parts of this chapter is putting in these really big and small numbers into your calculator, which I don't necessarily have a helpful suggestion. Everyone's calculator looks a little different. I Plugging these numbers in, I'm getting 1.3 times 10 to the 20th newtons. I'm going to calculate it one more time just to be safe. And it looks like I'm getting a different answer. 3.5 times 10 to the 22 newtons. huge force of gravity. It is this force of gravity, of course, that is causing the Earth to orbit the Sun. Now, one side note, on my calculator I have a button that says EE. -E. This stands for times 10 to the something. So when I put the numbers in my calculator, I do, for example, for G, 6.67 EE, negative 11. I know some of you probably have the 10 to the button. That also works just fine. But practice getting some of these numbers in because they can be tricky and, well, just easy to miscalculate and miss plugging in. All right, so force of gravity, universal law of gravitation, the force we've just calculated is the force of attraction, the force of gravity that the Earth experiences being pulled towards the sun. Now, Newton's third law, the sun would be experiencing the equal but opposite amount of force towards the Earth. That can be explained by Newton's third law, but also just by the equation that we're looking at here for the force of gravity. To find the attractive force of gravity on an object due to another, you need the mass of both objects. And so the equation itself also indicates that they will have the same force. Now, before moving on, let's talk also about the acceleration due to gravity. If you remember, we have been using, up until now, g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We've considered a constant, and for any problem taking place on the Earth, that is a completely fair assumption. Technically, it's not perfectly constant. It does depend upon distance from the center of the Earth, meaning altitude. So whether we're at sea level or in Salt Lake or at the top of Mount Everest, the acceleration of gravity actually uh, changes. It fluctuates, not fluctuates, but its value is slightly different at different elevations. Now, we can represent this and show why. We've been using the force of gravity as just mass times this little g, the acceleration due to gravity. 
But if we equate that to this new equation, let's talk about these m's. If I wanted to talk about the mass, sorry, the force of gravity on an object. So lowercase m is the mass of whatever object I'm talking about the force of gravity on. And we've been, all of our problems have been taking place on Earth. So my capital M would be my mass of my Earth. When I equate these two equations for the force of gravity, I find that the mass of the object cancels, and we have that the acceleration due to gravity of the Earth depends upon this constant, capital G, M is the mass of the Earth, R squared is the distance from the center of the Earth to essentially the center of mass of the object. If we were to use the values given in the test notes, just the approximate, not the approximate, but the values for the mass of the Earth, they give us an average radius of the Earth. It, of course, isn't perfectly circular, as we know. So the radius on that table is the average radius of the Earth. And G, this capital G, is a constant. We can calculate using these values. When I plug these numbers in, I'm getting 9.8. Now, if I went out to the next digit, I get 9.83. So, this would be in meters per second squared. It turns out, as we look at different locations on the Earth, it's this R value that's changing. If we're down at sea level, then R is smaller. If R is smaller, then G ends up being on the bigger side. As we come to our elevation, R gets bigger. As R gets bigger, G gets smaller. Ultimately, the value of G rounds to 9.8 meters per second squared anywhere on or near the Earth. That includes going to the peak of Mount Everest, even. So the highest peak, it might be 9.75, 9.77, I haven't calculated it, but it would round to 9.8. And that's why we've just gone ahead and considered it as a constant it just simplifies things for us. This equation, though, allows us to find the acceleration due to gravity for any object. For example, there's a lot of research into sending people to Mars. We could find the acceleration due to gravity on Mars. Big G is our constant. We would need the mass of Mars and then the average radius of Mars. We could do the same for any planet. We could find the acceleration due to gravity of the Earth towards the Sun. We calculated before that the Earth is attracted to the Sun. We could find G, the acceleration of the Earth towards the Sun due to gravity, by having the mass of the Sun. 
Now this R would not be the radius of the sun. It would be how far the earth is from the sun. Center of mass to center of mass. So R is just whatever distance the object is located at. And so how far center of mass, center of mass, this would give us the acceleration due to gravity of the earth falling towards the sun. We could do the same for the moon attracted to the earth. The moon is experiencing a gravitational acceleration towards the earth. We could calculate it. We would need to know the mass of the earth. So m in this equation is whatever object is causing the acceleration. And then r is the distance from center of mass to center of mass. So distance from earth center to moon center. So if we think out in space, many objects, they're all gravitationally attracted. Now if you actually go into the field of astrophysics, you actually need to look at relativity because uh, relativity, special relativity, explains it better than Newton's laws. but. Newton gives us a good approximation.